Ashken Hashim, who is the founder of Futbolita, the female football voice and FIFA's players agent, and James, James Walton, Walton, Southeast, 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 Southeast Asia Southeast Sports Asia Business, Group, Business leader, Group leader, and SG Travel and Hospitality Travel Services for Deloitte. Somebody needs to turn their volume, turn volume down. down. Uh, either James or Ash. Somebody's got a volume up. Can if you can turn your volume down, that would be good. We'll get rid of a little bit of. There we go. I should be okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, that, think it's Ash. I don't think it's Ash. <laughs> first. Yep. Okay. Is it like um, a, like a window that's open? Ah, there we go. Oh, yeah, we still yeah. have it. I We're think. getting a little bit of feedback. So it's somebody. Yeah. One one of you may have the um may have the volume up. Yeah. yeah. You both have wide My head volume head is all the way down. So. All the way down. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Maybe Ash. Ash, if you could get wide headphones. I, uh, I have wide headphones. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that, that would probably be good. Yeah, that yeah. would help. Okay. That would I'll help. tell you. What, we'll start with James, and then we'll come back to Ash. Can Ash come back? We'll reboot with Ash, and then we'll start with James. James, you're working at uh, Deloitte. Uh, you're the C Sports Business Group leader. And what made you decide to sponsor the Women's League? So I think from a personal point of view, I've been involved in the football scene and particularly the women's football team here in Singapore for, for quite a few years. I sit on the, the Women's Football Committee at Football Association as well as the Unleash the Raw project. So I'm, I'm kind of very personally involved in that. And, and then wearing my Deloitte hat, we've been heavily involved in the sports scene, obviously, over the years, sponsoring netball. Uh, the Sea Games, the ASEAN Para Games, and as well as being globally a, a sponsor for the International Olympic Committee. So we believe passionately in the value of sports, and we just think that there's a real opportunity in women's football right now, or right now, that, that it's the right time, uh, and this opportunity needs to be given to these young ladies to, to show what they can do, and hopefully if we come in and set an example, then, then others will follow. James, I'd just like to say thank you, you know, to Deloitte, to you guys, um, the fact that you're putting up $300,000 over several, over a couple of years, uh, three years rather, uh, to, to, to support women's uh, sport, I just think is fantastic. We need more local and international companies who are based in Singapore to, to do that, and, and you guys have really done a great job. Oh, thank you, Glenn. I mean, I, I think that was one of the things we were hoping as, as well, is that people will see this, will see you know, the name being uh, branded around, see the league taking off the way it's taking off. And I've already had other companies approach us and say, you know, what are the opportunities? How else can we help and get involved? So hopefully more more companies will come to the forefront. I mean, it is wonderful. It's a, you're a title sponsor, three-year deal, option for two additional years, worth more than 300000 uh, the price money for the competition has increased fivefold with this season's champion mm. set to receive $25,000, 10000 to the runners up. Um, just, just great stuff. I mean, but for the longest time, uh, James, there's always been skepticism. You know, if you, if you invest in local sports, effectively, it's money down the drain. That's not something I agree with, obviously, but that's often the perception, the stereotype. How do you, for people listening to Money FM, how do you combat or deal with or challenge that stereotype that there's no interest, there's mm. no support, and there's no return, there's no financial return in investing in local sports? What would you say to that? I think the starting point is you have to understand why you're doing it. You know, why are we, why are we doing local sport? There's an element of national pride. You're here talking about National Day, right? How are we supporting the nation? How are we supporting our communities? And, and we look at the effect of, you know, Joseph Schooling winning his gold at Rio and, and all the para golds that, that PX has won over the years and you see how that lifts people up. But I, I think one of the things is that people have to be patient. I mean, as a as a somewhat of an outsider here in Singapore, I can say I think sometimes in the past the investment hasn't always uh, been as strong as it could have been or in the right places. But I think over the last decade, as you go back to the SEA Games and, and before that, the investment has started to come in. But it takes time. It takes time to see the results. And we're starting to see it in some sports like badminton. We've been seeing it for a while in netball. We're seeing it now in swimming. We're starting to see it, starting to see it. In, and we really hope football will be next on that list. Mm. Um, Ash um, Hashim, you're back. Uh, thanks for coming back with us. We're just uh, working on some of our little audio issues. Still getting a little bit of feedback from somewhere. So, um, anyway, we'll, we'll hope that it goes away. But tell us from your perspective, Ash, how uh, important this is to have this deal with Lloyd. 
Um, of course, I think it's a massive um, thing for women's football, not just uh, football, but in sport in Singapore in general. I think it's really exciting to have women's football be backed, you know, by a sponsor like Deloitte. And in fact, we have a magazine show that we do with them every week and they let us use the space to film. So I think it's exciting. Um, it bodes well for women's football because I think the women in the game have been waiting for something like this for a long time. And to have a sponsor like this back the league and also sort of give them the confidence they need, I think, you know, makes the women feel that, that level of confidence when they're out there playing the game, you know, to have a sponsor like Deloitte. So I'm really excited to be part of this. I mean, doing the show for them and, of course, being part of the whole Women's Football League. Yeah, yeah I'm really excited. Not just for the girls, but I think in general for the region, it's really good because who knows, you know, like other leagues might be looking at us and going, yeah, I think we need to invest more in women's football. Yeah. Ash, you're involved with the football scene for so long now, many, many years, but you're still very, very young. I must add that. And you are the, <laughs> Thank you. You, you are the, <laughs> the, the, the face of the, the Women's Premier League, as you mentioned there. You're hosting a show on it, which is great. I think it's on YouTube, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but you're also involved with the men's game. You are Singapore's first. I don't know if you're the only, but you're certainly the first <laughs> female football agent in Singapore, FIFA licensed. So you have seen the changes, mm. uh, good and bad, mm. in football in the last sort of 10 or 15 years. Where do you think women's game needs to go from here? What needs to happen next? We've all seen the Euros, what a magnificent success it was. The England Lionesses won. Record-breaking TV audiences in the UK, record-breaking stadium attendances. So the interest is there. What do we need to do next in Singapore to keep it? So the answer really, um, Neil, great point about the Lionesses because Alex Scott, I think, you know, in, in the UK, she's very well known, you know, for from being a former lioness. She did say one thing, more brands didn't believe her in the first place when it came to investing in women's football. But after the lionesses won, they won the Euros, they were all over the place and going, yeah, now this is the moment for women's football. I think more brands need to get on board and believe that women's football is the way forward. Um, I think you've been for some games, Neil, you know the difference between men and women's football. When you go for a women's game, it's a lot more, you know, vibrant family atmosphere. The vibes are a little bit more positive, I would say. It's just a general feeling of, yes, we can, you know. It's not just about women empowerment, but, you know, families getting together. So women's football, to me, it's a cohesive game compared to the men's sport, which can be quite toxic, let me just add. So it's a, it's a growing space, and I think that it's a long way to go. And I think what needs to be, uh, to move forward, we need more brands like Deloitte, you know, to come on board, to really believe. And because women's football is not just professional football, it's grassroots, you know, it's a, it's a lot of of opportunities for really to, to really recognize young I mean, young girls to really get them to believe in themselves again. So I guess more brands and more uh, sponsorship, I think. That's how and I just, think um, it came and forward. just yeah. to give some, great, yeah, absolutely. And just to give some context for our listeners before we bring James back in. I mean, there is progress being made with the Lionesses. Uh, they did quite well, I think, at their recent SEA Games. Ash, you might want to mention that. So just give a bit of some perspective, some context for listeners who are not familiar. Where are the Singapore Lionesses right mm. now? Okay, so according to the latest standings, I know James was talking to me this morning about where we are ranked. Um, so after the AFF Championships, there was a table tabulated by the fantastic folks at ASEAN Football. And apparently we are eighth in ASEAN, but James might say we are ninth. So it really depends. Right? But whatever it is, we are above Malaysia Indonesia at this point of time. But right above us, we have you know the World Cup qualify, uh, qualifying team, Philippines and Thailand. I would say we are in good state, you know, we are getting there. We are, we're, at least we're not below <laughs> um, the traditional teams. I think we are getting there. So that's where we are. We have a long way to go, but I think really I believe in our lionesses and I think that we can do it, yeah. Do yeah, and, and James, welcome back uh, uh, to you. Uh, we we're talking with uh, James Walton, the Southeast Asia Sports Business Group leader uh, at Deloitte and also Ashkin Hashim, the founder of Futbolita, talking about this um, the sponsorship that Deloitte has committed to now, three-year deal worth uh, more than 300000 Sing dollars, um, bringing back this idea of giving back to the communities. Uh, James, when you look at different sports, how do you, uh, how do you decide which ones will get your money? Uh, if I can just be quite blunt about it, uh, you mentioned that you are contributing in a, in a variety of different sports, including the Women's Premier League here in Singapore. How do you make those choices? Yeah, so, so we're not a B2C company, obviously. We're a B2B, right. so it's not so much as it could be perhaps with a, a telco or a bank where you're looking necessarily at how many people are, 
or are eyeballing or how many people are showing up at matches. We're, we're more interested in really is what is the story? What is the, what can be done? What will our money be put towards? How will it uplift the sport? How will it uplift the community? Um, and then what opportunities are there for our own people, our own employees, the families of our employees, our clients to, to get involved mm. and be mm. part of that story as well. And I, I think with netball, one of the reasons we got into netball, I mean, we've had 16, 17 national netballers working in Deloitte uh, since 2014 as part of a, a scheme we have to provide employment opportunities to, to national athletes. So Mickey Lynn, Charmaine So, Kimberly Lim, they, they've all worked mm. in, in Deloitte. And, and so there was a real opportunity, there was a real synergy. As I say, with women's football, um, we just felt as part of the Unleash the, the Raw project that, that companies need to get behind that project, that it needs to be a public-private partnership, um, and that there's too many. We can all sit on the sidelines and, and criticize on, on, on Facebook, or we can get in and try and do our part and, and, and help. And it just, as I said before, it just felt like the right time to, to step in and, and try to set an example. That's perfect. And, and Ash, if I can just come to you real quick, when you, when you look at attitudes, uh, uh, especially among Singapore parents and in households, you know, one of the big problems has been sport is okay for kids when they're young, but it's not taken seriously for most families as a, as a, a possible career. And what changes are, are you trying to make in that or impact are you trying to have? And what changes are you maybe seeing outside of the few well-known uh, sporting families that we all know about here in Singapore? Well, I think it's it's been changing a lot because I put a lot of content on social media and I create content about women's football a lot on platforms like TikTok and Instagram. And a lot of parents are contacting me, parents, you know, of young girls who are going, hey, you know, I have a young girl who wants to join an academy. Can you recommend a place, you know, is there a career path? So they're really getting involved in the game mm -hmm. as opposed to like 10 years ago when I first started making content. So there's a huge change because parents are seeing, you know, watching women's football and saying, hey, you know, we have role models like Chloe Kelly, who recently scored the winning goal for England at the Lionesses, you know, Alex Scott, um, you know, Alex Morgan. These, these girls are creating pathways and they're also very educated. They've gone to college, you know, they've had scholarships as well, some of them. So there is that cohesive pathway of education and football coming together in women's football that I'm seeing as, as, as well as something very inspiring. So I think parents are getting in into the game and I think it's really, really important because girls and then when they're going through that path, they need that support from their parents and family as much as they can because it's not an easy route I have to add, but it is a very promising one. So yeah, it's, it's, it's all been good, especially in recent, in recent years. Yeah. Wonderful. So nice. we're seeing a f the fledging beginnings of a pathway from a sporting perspective, James. I'm thinking from a, a sort of corporate perspective, how do you pitch that pathway to your guys in your office. I'm just thinking when you said brilliantly, by the way, that you convinced Deloitte or you and your team helped convince Deloitte to sponsor the women's game. Put your shoes, put yourself back in those shoes for the benefit of other companies listening. They go into their boardroom. They say, we're going to invest in women's football or women's sport. I'm guessing the first response will be, let's just do the men. <laughs> the pathway is established. <laughs> There's an element of revenue return there. Why should we do the women? I'm sure that's a question you was asked why should we do the women? So give us that pitch. Why should we do women's football or women's sports generally? So, so Neil, I was watching your, your new show the other night with, uh, with Ash as, as well, and, and you made a, a comment which I've said a few times, which is that the, 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 the immediate future for women's football potentially in Singapore may be brighter than, than the men's just because of level of competition and, and where we're at. You made the comment maybe the women will qualify for the World Cup before the men will, right? And, and, and I, I think mm. there is a, an element of truth in that. I, I think it's also about really, as I say, where is women's football at and what can you do with an amount of money to, to lift up that sport versus where is men's football at? In the men's uh, SPL, they are professional players. They're, they're, there's sponsors already involved. You've got private owners funding some of these teams. There is a lot of money in, in the game. The question really is about how it gets used and, and, and how to put it up. The reality on the women's side is the opposite. These girls are not played, are not paid to play football. Most of them are working or students on the side. Um, they don't have access to the best facilities. They don't have necessarily access to the best coaches and, and, and equipment. And so an amount of money in the women's space can really make a difference. And I think at Deloitte, we believe strongly in, in diversity, equity, inclusion, um, and, and trying to create opportunities uh, for young women. And so we see this as a group 
that with the right amount of support can really change things. Could not agree more. Fantastic. Yeah, we have to leave it there. But thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, Ashkin Hashim, founder of Futbolita and a FIFA players agent uh, in Singapore. James Walton, Southeast Asia sports business group leader at Deloitte. And I just will mention, if you are looking for a business management consulting firm, you may want to just remember that at least one firm, Deloitte, <laughs> is putting its money where its mouth is and is supporting uh, the sporting community, women and men in Singapore, and doing a great job of it. So hopefully you'll get some good. You'll, hopefully you'll get Thank some you, bottom God. line return <laughs> out of that, uh, uh, James. But anyway, thanks for being with us. Have, have a uh, have a happy National Day weekend, and hope to have you on again. Yeah. Thank you.